see the um, lunar? No, we had a storm. Oh, you're clouded too. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I got to um, I got to wake up also at four o'clock exactly. I went outside, and it was all cloudy. It was all cloudy, but good. Yeah, we were hoping, but yeah. very intense energies though. Very intense. <clears throat> All right, here we are. Hello, amazing family. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is May 26th, 2021. And I'm honored to be accompanied by my beautiful brother, Craig Leaflor, Reiki healer, sound therapy expert. And today's subject is sexual healing. We're gonna, we're gonna be uh, discussing this interesting and very needed subject today. And, um, before we go there, a um, couple of things. First, uh, I wish to, we all wish to uh, say thank you and sending our prayers and love to all those who are fighting to eradicate uh, tra uh, child slavery and um, human trafficking from our planet, as we all know it's important to eradicate it from our planet. Otherwise, we won't be able to progress in our evolution unless we clear out this, clear out this cancer from our planet. And um, thank you all. Blessings to you all, guys, and the work that you're doing. Incredible work. Thank you. And um, love to all the children and all who have been involved in quick healing and recovery and uh, wishing you all well. Casca uh, was supposed to join us today. Last minute thing happened, so she couldn't make it. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it next time. And Michelle, our dear sister, she's traveling around the country collecting crystals. She's in Arkansas right now, digging. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. So uh, a quick update, uh, we, are, we have put together workshops for you guys in Costa Rica. Uh, you are invited to check out the details on our website on vortex.com forward slash retreats. Um, note that Vortex has the number eight instead of the E in the domain name. And this is the page, you simply go to retreats, you take it there. This is our first one. Uh, and we have one in August and then in January, the same similar format. And then we're coming up with more for 2022, plant medicine as well. And if you are a healer expert in any type of modality and you have a group you wanna come in, send me a message. I'll, I'll facilitate your, um, your stay and um, at the hotel, at the Buddha, Buddha Hotel in Costa Rica. Beautiful, beautiful place. Um, phenomenal i just it's you know it's um it's it's paradise literally paradise so dear Look, craig i can't wait to go i'm gonna miss uh, the first two here but uh, the third one in january for sure that would be awesome that would be awesome we'd love to we'll have a lot of fun there a lot of fun i was there in um february for my birthday awesome it was, it was incredible yeah. Incredible. Did yeah. you just go with a bunch of friends or? No, I went alone. I went out to uh, check the hotel because I've been working with the uh, with this hotel for a while now. I've been doing their marketing and we became really good friends. And um, now it's um, the hotel is at my disposal. In other words, I can uh, do as many retreats as I want in other, any kind of, um, you know, it's basically in my, in my hands to take care That's of it. That's excellent. And so everybody's, whoever's ready to go, let's roll it. It's a beautiful place, and um, um, it, no words, paradise. How many rooms are there? Um, he's adding five more rooms, so a total we'll have uh, 15 rooms, and we can, uh, the occupancy is uh, 40, 45. And um, for the retreats, minimum 10. Um, a good size retreat number is about 20, 25. A full restaurant bar, vegetarian, vegan, you know, whatever menu you need, we'll, we'll set up for you. It's all inclusive. We'll put you, we'll put a package for you, which is um, very reasonable. We're 20 minutes away from Nusara, north of Nusara, which is the, uh, the huge location for surfers. Uh, very, very sweet city as well. Little town, actually. 
Uh, the beaches are, you know, every night you have most spectacular sunset. Every night. Every night the villagers and the local, I mean, the, even the guests, they go down to the beach. There is an area, a rocky area you climb on. Everybody sits there for the night, for the sunset, and they come back and do their thing. Really, really cool. A lot of nightlife? A little bit, yeah. In, in, that, in, that, in the peninsula in, in, in San Juanillo, where the hotel is, it's a very small, you know, it's like a street if you look at it. And there's a few house, houses and there's, there's two uh, coves of beaches. And so there's, uh, there's besides us, there's another little bar and there's another restaurant on the trees and another corner, which is really cool. So there, there's activity there. There's hotels and there's little, oh, Pachamama's there, 10 minutes away. So you get traffic from different locations, but there is, there is nightlife, yes. Bar in the trees. So this um, that one. this guy has for many years been hosting. Uh, he has a little, it's it's a restaurant, but where you go, where he hosts the, the, the dinners and lunches, it's it, it, it's more of um, he has a special program, and um, he he hosts you on the trees. He has those platforms on the trees where you climb up and you get there, and you know he serves you food and whatever. Stuff he's, he's I've never been there, so I don't know. I know he does it there. I've seen it when you go to the beach, you can see the, the house, the huts on, on, the, on the trees, which is really cool. It sounds Very awesome. sweet. It sounds awesome, yeah. Yeah, totally. I've never had dinner in the trees either, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Very cool. So, our subject, yeah, um, sexual healing. Craig, you got the flow, brother. Well, throat, uh. I think it's not touched on enough, maybe wrong uh, choice of words there, but it's not uh, not talked about. Um, even with teachers, with Reiki or Kundalini or Kendra, it's not talked about. It seemed to be that hush, hush. One might find it offensive or, you know, so it's kind of all conversation in the back room, so to speak. And when most of my clients find themselves rejuvenated, they find themselves buzzing with energy. Um, with that comes that sexual pleasure, but also comes all that pain and hurt. Um, when we're working when I'm working with people's energy and healing um, past trauma, um, sexuality is always brought up because everybody has their own kind of view on that. Um, so, and also my own self work that I've had to do with my trauma growing up. So, I kind of had to get into it, which uh, allowed me to be able to help others more, uh, more efficiently. So then I was asked, well, what's the difference between, you know, Reiki energy, intention, um, Kundalini energy, and Tantra, which, you know, my first um, information on that was that old Chinese book with like a thousand different positions, right? And it was part of that Chinese um, way of showing love. And so, you know, at, I don't know how old I was, nine, ten, whatever it was, um, that was my first kind of view of sexuality. Um, I was raised in foster care, so I didn't have that normal upbringing where, you know, parents would teach you about sexuality, do's and don'ts, and all that. I was raised in a foster care where, you know, people worked for eight hours or nine hours and went home. So those conversations weren't allowed. You didn't talk about that because you could be liable. So that left me really, in a way, um, avoided of that kind of 
information. Um, the only information I knew was the negative side of blood. Greg, your line is breaking up. Sorry. So, you know, I was left with only the bad parts of sexuality. So growing up, I had to learn all those things that, you know, our parents were supposed to teach us. So throughout my years, I've, uh, I've worked on myself and dealing with, you know, that kind of upbringing. Um, when getting involved in Reiki and working with energy and helping others heal from, you know, past trauma or, you know, family situations, um, love and respect, you know, the heart chakra comes up, right? So we have to figure what is love, right? Is it physical? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it all of them? And when we're trying to figure it out, or at least for me, um, I want as much information possible. So first I was curious about Tantra because of one, what I saw when I was a child, but just what we hear in the grapevine, um, which is not a lot, right? Like it's still cut pretty, it's kept hush hush. Um, even Kundalini, it's kind of first taught of yoga and breathing. So you would need to learn how to breathe and do yoga poses. Um, and that was my first um, uh, opinion of what I was seeing. Um, I don't do yoga and my, my body won't let me do that stuff. So I'm going, well, how do I still reap that benefit without doing yoga? And I think yoga is one part of the health and um, being active and, and just getting your energy flowing. Mm -hmm. um, but meditation does that as well. And you can still do some yoga poses just to kind of set that intention. Um, so I started looking into that as well. Then I was looking into, with me doing Reiki, I was looking into, so how do I deal with the client's sexuality as a teacher, teacher mentor, because working with your first chakra is your root chakra. Now, depending on the client, that may not be the area I should deal with first, right? You need to get to first understand what was going on and okay, so we'll start at the head and work our way down. But when you're teaching them how to ground themselves, that again is the root chakra. So how do I deal with those situations that will come up with people that have trauma issues? Um, be it, you know, um, well, even you, you mentioned it, sex trafficking. Um, I'm involved with another organization that is in the midst of getting together and housing females and males with sex traffickers through sex trafficking and kind of reboot them and, and get them back organized into society that mm -hmm. they were taken out of. Yeah. So how do you heal somebody when you know that anything could set that off. Um, just your intention of trying to help could set that off. So how do we do that? Um, and that's kind of why I, I started kind of digging into these uh, things. And I found with Tantra, that's about pleasure, one, as a couple, and two, by yourself. But the idea is to Again, align your energy, but release it all. So it's about the orgasm more than anything else. It's just a way of achieving a more intimate 
relationship with a couple. Um, it's more sensual. It's not about just getting it on, get it done, and you know, give the kids a sandwich before bed or what, whatever, right? Like, maybe not before bed, maybe it should be, you know? Um, right. So, and what I've seen it is people going out on retreats and learning it that way. Obviously, that's the best way to have that privacy. So, it's interesting how, how unintimate we are with our partners. Um, you know, we might be intimate for, you know, a half hour, but then that, that intimacy goes to the wayside. It's just because of daily life. But if you're doing Tantra, then that's a process of really seeing your partner and seeing their energy and being part of that energy. Um, to bring that to a whole new level. So the relationship with said couple would be a lot deeper because they're a lot more open to each other. Um, then you got Kundalini where it's, you know, a lot of people, I thought it was about sexuality, but it's, it's not. It's about taking and harnessing the sexual energy, but keeping it and allowing that energy to heal our, ourselves and kind of radiate throughout our whole body, not just root chakras. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that really interesting because, you know, they say that orgasm is the strongest energy your body can create. Mm -hmm. So to release it and let it go, is kind of defeating the purpose, keeping it and allowing it to rejuvenate the whole body is a lot different. And Reiki is almost, it's almost strictly healing. Like you're working with energy, you're dealing with trauma, you're dealing with death, you're dealing with so much. Um, like it just the list keeps going. You know, we could be dealing with kidneys, uh, throat, uh, thyroid, cancer, right. liver disease, you know, and those aren't touched at all in Kundalini or Tantra. They don't talk, that's not what they're there for. Um, so, although you can have pleasure with Reiki and feeling that energy, um, it, it mainly, it's for healing. And having that right teacher will bring you to a point where you're, you're holding on to that energy. It's not about releasing that energy, but you know, shining that energy and I always say stand and shine shine your light you know and confidence is huge with anything you do so if you can get somebody just to change that thought pattern of I wouldn't say self-hatred but you know always putting yourself down instead of, no, I'm going to shine and I'm going to put that away and let it go. So that's kind of what I've been, um, what I've been doing lately and, and looking things up and learning a lot more than just sexuality. It's a big, broad um, conversation. Beautiful. Thank you. You, you, we, before we started, you mentioned something and it's pretty clarified to define what you just described again. And that is Kundalini work is you within you because you are in alignment with what you desire to do with yourself and to bring that up, right? Of course, with the assistance of a teacher, perhaps, but at the same time, when you do energy work, where it comes to Reiki or any other modality, you are plucking away the energy elements that are being, um, 
uh, that that are there, they are implemented by our decisions of the past, or choices of the past, or the events of the past. So they just need to be cleared out. But then again, you said another thing which is very important, and I want to emphasize on that, and that is awareness. And not until you tell the client, this is what happened. So by them becoming aware of what took place, they are able to transmute it, to let it go, to dissolve it, to send it back to source, you know, to reshape the past, the relationship to the past of the event, which is really, really very, very important. Very and important. There, there are a few ways that I, um, I try to help them, you know, kind of release that. Definitely for anyone that's had any kind of trauma, mm -hmm. they're there 24 seven, not too often they're here in reality. They're always being brought back to that trauma because that's where they are. That's where that damage happened and that's where they'll be until the damage is repaired. Um, so, you know, if they're always thinking it, saying it, writing it down and making sure someone else knows. So it's not just one thing, writing it down, crumpling it up and burning it. It's letting somebody else know, letting that secret out. Mm -hmm. And once that kind of leaves your body, then burning it is it's time, right? And, you know, I'm just dealing with a client yesterday that she called me back saying, okay, I wrote it all down, talked to my, my girlfriend, and now we just burnt it and I feel amazing. Mm -hmm. I said, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Now this may come back. Mm -hmm. You know, those stink, stinking thinking might come back. So what do we do? We do it again. Right. There's layers and layers and layers to it. Right. You just peel it back one layer of the onion mm -hmm. and just to get easier and easier and right. easier. So there's no more. That Letting go of that first layer is the, the most critical one. And having the, the the, um, the willingness and the understanding that, you know, there's maybe more, just be prepared because it's not over. But sometimes it's one shot. Yep. One shot to say, say hi to everyone. Uh, hey, Karen, welcome dear sister. Melissa from New Zealand. She says it's the 27th. 27th in New Zealand. Um, she's one day ahead of us. Incredible. And then um, Marla Love, she has a question. Marla says, may I ask a question? What, why did God appear to give me men? So, so why did God appear to give men so much sexual energy that they either misuse it or feel guilty because they want sex from their partner? And then she says, sex is not love. It's my last name by marriage. Would you like to go for that? I don't know. So the first one, uh, what's your first question? Just, uh, first was, may I ask, uh, why did the God appear to give men so much sexual energy that they either misuse it or feel guilty because they want sex from their partner? Um, I think both have that energy. Yep. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's just guys. Mm -hmm. um, we were allowed to be more vocal, um, you know, growing up through the ages of mankind, we could say whatever we wanted and women were hushed and they were told to keep quiet and they were told, you know, sexuality was bad or, you know, when, you know, the Bible came into play and, you know, any woman that looked at you wrong was, you know, uh, promiscuous. So, throughout the years they've been pushed down and kind of in the way that was that secret that you know parents had um even in in my life i'm more vocal about my sexuality with my children than my wife is what's the difference there's no different she's enjoying that as well right and that's what love is now is love sex no 
No, at all. Um, I've had many intimate times that I didn't have sex, and it was the, one of the best times I've ever had. So sex is not love, but it is a way of closeness, and it's a way for, you know, to raise a family and have a family. Um, her last question was, uh, I can't hear you. Um, you touched it. Uh, sex is not love. It's my last name by marriage. Um, that's a shame. Um, because I don't care if you're married or not. You, you have the right to, to do what you want with your body. Um, and if that means you don't want to be intimate with your partner, then don't be. It's something else is missing. And it shouldn't be a chore or feel that you have to do something because you're married. I think there, there needs to be a close, I think you need to work on that bond again. Um, and I was talking about that with Tantra, that it's about couples connecting their energy, not so much the act of having sex. So that might be something that you could look into. Um, I think that could bring that relationship to to a higher a higher frequency, a, a better place for you. Um, Marla, you're asking another thing here, which is um, it says also after women birth children, they lose sexual energy. Even men in India are feeling guilty. Look, I don't know what's going on in India. I cannot speak for men in India. But from my experience with birth, Beautiful. Um, birth is a life-changing event. There's so much that goes on. And you know better than anybody else, than men, what goes on in your body. Of course, we in past lives, we were women once too. Or many times we were women, but we don't remember that. But from what our experiences from having children, Craig has 10, I have two. Um, the woman goes through a big trans transformation and it does take time to come back. Some women right away, I mean, after two or three weeks, they're back on the horse, they're ready to go. They got the sexual prime, they're, they're ready to go and their husband, hey, wow, exciting, wonderful. Some take much longer, some take six months, year, sometimes even two years. All those, are important to be addressed, important to be to ask, to become aware and to investigate, to perhaps seek assistance. Uh, there could be a trauma, there could be a physical matter, there could be a hormonal, a hormonal issue, there could be um, a misalignment in the way that you perceive sexual relationship with yourself because you got, you got to learn about yourself, your own sexuality, otherwise you are not going to be enjoying and having the full benefit of this the union between you and your partner i don't think i don't care if it's a man or a woman it doesn't matter you got to learn first yourself understand that sex has there's no no guilt in that yeah. it's a, it's a gift it's a gift it's just like you're you have the gift of eating food and tasting the flavors and enjoying the sun and enjoying the water when you take a shower all these basic beautiful things are for you. It's a gift. Why even judge it? Yes, there's abuse in everything. We're humans. We, we're we here to learn. We're here to learn the dynamics of right or wrong, dark and black, right or left. And through this experience, we learn what's the best for us and to grow and expand, to raise our consciousness. We are in a pivotal, pivotal point right now where we're learning so much about ourselves and so much about our planet and what's taking place. From a global individual, we had a whole year to go into the, to you know to to solid to go into solitude and to learn about ourselves, which was incredible. So with you, Marla, it's important. You know, Craig is saying is is run on money. Um, we you, it's it's we advise you to look into the subject and seek what it is that's blocking you or preventing you from feeling comfortable with sexuality yeah. your own sexuality first and the right partner will come in and if you don't 
-hmm. Why? Why don't you? Right? right? It could easily be, you know, you had a crazy delivery. This could be um, the child taking extra hormones and you missing or needing that boost. It could be your child has, let's say, learning disabilities and you fear having that intimacy just in case you have another child that you feel guilt because mm -hmm. you made that child and now they're going through, you know, certain struggles. So there, there could be a wide variety of reasons why one couple won't feel comfortable in, again doing doing good things. So it's a really search inward for that. And like you said, loving yourself again, I think um, she needs to yeah, really dig deep and, and look at the reasons why. Um, and if it's more because you have to kind of do the chore, so to speak, and then you really need to look into the relationship mm -hmm. and what's going on there. Yeah, totally. Marla, we recently had a session. I love spending time with you. Um, both Craig and, um, and myself offer sessions, and you can find our work on ilovehealers.com or reach us to reach out to us here on, on Facebook. Um, the the modalities I use is is pure channeling, and I also use coffee, coffee reading, which is um, the coffee. There you go. Yeah. The traditional format is you go visit the uh, the reader, you drink the coffee, we turn over the cup, and you have a session with me. That you don't need it. I do it remotely. Um, it's the same effect as if you were drinking the coffee, because energy is energy. And Craig, you use tarot cards. You what are your modalities? What do you use? To pluck in that information, what's what's going on? Why the why's finding the why's? I really use my intuition and what I pick up. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have tarot cards, um, but I don't think they've moved from the last time I showed you. <laughs> no, because um, that something else is giving me that information. So just for me. I don't really use the tarot cards. I I use my intuition and the energy I'm picking up. Mm -hmm. um, and like I'm, I'm still connected to her. I know there's a lot more trauma with her when she was younger and maybe overbearing boyfriends or overbearing father or over just being controlled. So I think there's that issue as well. So that's how I do it, right? It, it just what I'm picking up. And again, I'm not even reading what she's writing or, or we can't hear her voice or, or picture. Um, but there is a block there. And it would, it definitely comes from the cause is from a male. Because that's where that question is related to. Yeah. Um, my other modalities are all Reiki healing, um, lots of trauma work. Um, I do teach Reiki. I teach about auras and how to read them. And um, it's not just a couple of colors. There's 30, 40 different colors that uh, can change around somebody which can tell you their blocks and where they need the most help as well and you know some people say oh they just looked all dark and cloudy that's a negative energy coming off them right so you usually hear you know red green yellow blue but then you also get those other muddier colors. So I, I do teach that as a course. Um, and I'm also in the paranormal field as well. So I do a lot of work with, with energy.
energy there. So I, I do like to teach and, you know, teaching people how to protect themselves and protect their energy and work on themselves and right. set them on that journey of rediscovery. Yeah. Beautiful. We have a very intense day today. Lunar eclipse. Um, so with that, I think it's um, it's important to address that as well, because uh, when we have days like this, everything is amplified. And sometimes we feel things that are uncomfortable. And I recommend all of you who feel, if there's anything that you feel uncomfortable in a specific area of your body, or there is a thought pattern that comes to be again and again, or a worry or anything that comes to mind, um, have a look at it. In other words, spend time into it. See why. Where's the why coming from? Because um, there's some, you know, your body, your consciousness, your higher self, your your intuition is telling you there's something there to look into. Let that surface in. These days are very important because we are clearing up what I call residual akash. It's those akashic memories, imprints that we have from past lifetimes, and they're no longer serving us. We don't need them. In fact, we never needed them. They're just sitting there and just collecting dust. So it's important to let them go. So work through them. If it's by meditation, spending time with um, in nature, um, um, affirmations, digging in, asking for assistance. You know, Craig and myself, Casca, Michelle, we're all here to assist you. Hey, Felicia, welcome dear sister. And um, so anything we want to share um, beyond what we just discussed already on, on sexual healing? Uh, I want to do um, healing meditation with, uh, with Gaia when we're done, before we go. Is there any other questions? Uh, anybody else any, has any more questions? <coughs> any more questions? Uh, no, nothing, nothing's coming up for now. If anything comes up, I'll let you know. Um, you know, we, we spoke about sexuality. And there's one thing I want to, the subject I want to touch. It is your sexual identity. And this goes for so many out there, right? We have this uh, so-called divide and conquer ideology that's coming into our society that's trying to jeopardize our natural progress in our ascension and so on. Now those guys are moving out, but we're identifying this that when they're trying to distort what men is, what men is, what women is, what women are, and and what men are, what women what women are, and then we have all those shades in between. But then they're trying to categorize it in a way that is not real. It's not true. It's it's destroying the fundamental things of who we are. There's men, there's women, you come in the physical body. There are those who are male dominant, female dominant, woman dominant, where there a man is attracted to women, and that is a sexuality connection. And then there's women who are female to male and then in between we have those who are variations of although you're in physicality of one but you're attracted to the to the same sex and the opposite sex in different different degrees and so there is a natural process that you go through from being a male dominant to a female dominant throughout incarnations. There's a specific amount of incarnation and I teach about it. There's, there's a class that I teach about this transition and what happens in between all of those transitions. And it's a natural process. So being, being a lesbian or being you know, a, a, a gay in any way of 
variance, if you would call it. It's all a natural process. Honor yourself. If it is what you feel, it what it is. Don't listen to anybody who says anything. This is what you're. This is who you are. Be that way. Media out there confuses everyone. Look inside of you. Look into your truth. What's important is you. You are your own doctor. We are here only to facilitate. We only to be the mirror for you. To assist you in seeing what it is that you need to look into. So when we, when Craig and myself or Casco and Michelle, uh, we, 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 we point out, listen, you got something in your childhood somewhere around the age of seven, what happened? So we're reflecting there's something there that happened and you bring it up and by you bringing it up, becoming conscious of this. And again, we talked, spoke about it. This is awareness. You're able to transmute it. Oh my God, that's what happened. My parents went through a divorce and I felt very lonely. I felt very um, scared. I was in fear. I didn't feel safe. So to this day, you're not going to feel safe until you know that when you were a child, you didn't feel safe. And now you can feel safe because you know that translation of what took place is no longer valid because you're not a child anymore. That transmits the whole thing. It's gone. It's over. Doing some healing around it. Connecting with you and a child. And so there's so many variations of what can take place. So what are the whys? And coming back to this, what I started with, your own sexuality is your own. Honor it. I don't care what other people think, what other people say. You know yourself. If you're attracted to women, if you're a man attracted to women, that's you. If you're a female attracted to men, that's you. If you're a female attracted to women and men, that's you. If a male is attracted to male and female, that's you. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's a natural process of, your, of who you are on the planet, your physical expression. And it's real. It's not a disease. Who said it's a disease? It's not a disease. It's natural. Be yourself. Honor yourself. Respect. Don't hurt anyone out there. Do it out of love, out of honor to yourself, respect to others. Very simple, very plain. Felicia has a program, has a question. The programming is designer is designed to hijack and, and discript our sacral energy. Yes, the kingdom is within. Absolutely, I agree with you. Totally. Now, I'm going to bring something up here because I, I think... Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to read this question. Felicia is putting something else in. Go ahead. Um, back in the early 50s, um, that's when the genome is starting to be looked at. All vaccines, all uh, uh, immunization shots, um, everything is taken from the female's uterus and nuclei. So already there is a female um, chromosome and we are connecting that female chromosome as a shot to males and females. And then they wonder why we're having this boom since really the eighties of transgender. Mm -hmm. Now this comes from those shots. Um, they use those embryos as a way of getting pure um, genomes. So again, by not in injecting a male to a male, they're injecting a, fem a female's chromosomes into a male and then that get transferred into a birth of a child. So they didn't really look at male and female. They just looked at the female. Okay, we'll take it from here and we'll give it out. So they, and this was something um, they did without telling anyone, of course. Uh, this was just uh, behind one of the vaccines. And, you know, again, even with the, the coronavirus, they're using amniotic fluids, female chromosome, mm -hmm. to start the process of figuring out 
that's how they make that virus, right? So again, they're going to be injecting female chromosomes into a male, where it should be a male's chromosomes into a male, and a female chromosomes into a female. So I just wanted to bring that up because, well, I think it's important in in the, in the way society has become, especially with the new viruses that are coming out. Um, you really need to do more research on those little, I wouldn't say mistakes that they made doing um, only using female chromosomes. Um, it just interested me how they didn't think of what the repercussions of that could be. And today we have a lot more children that are going through a lot more um, to society being so mean and so vicious. And then labeling everyone, you know, um, bipolar, you know, before it was just bipolar, uh, schizophrenia, and um, let and conquer. Yeah. And now it's, conquer. it's plainly done. It's it's everything from a hangnail society to look uh you know, even loose hair society, there's a talk show for everything, right? And everybody's separating instead of just being one. Right. You know? I think the, uh, the 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 one that you're referring to as being you know be, being brutal to one another. I think it's been there for many years. It's just that we have these platforms on social media to express those, and it's very easy. I mean, the guys or you know, you're communicating with somebody around the planet. You, you're, not, you're not afraid to say anything or do it, but you're not going to do it face to face. So things do come out, do surface in ways that they never come up because they have the ability. Uh, not the ability, but the place to share their mindset in a way that they are not in danger, they're not at risk. And yeah, I agree with you. And as far as what you said about the jab jabs, the previous ones, that's something new. I didn't know that. But I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because for the last 200 years, they've been working diligently to, to bring in their own agendas and to destroy our to destroy the society for their own benefit, control, control, destroy, kill, you know, domination, whatever, you know, all that stuff that they have on, on their, on their, on their, in their plans. Um, we do have, um, okay, I want to go back to Felicia. Felicia said something and it's important to answer it. Um, it's a very delicate question and statement. Thank you for sharing, Felicia, first of all. My father raped me until I was seven. I'm seeking to end my emotional trauma. I think I have figured it out. I have forgiven all involved and I'm releasing any panic or trauma. I can't help but feel there is something I'm missing. And then she replies to what we discussed is diabolical evil and the media assist in the whole process. Yes, that's true, absolutely. So. I'm so sorry for the situation you grew up in. Um, having gone through that with a parent is, is even harder. Um, cause there's a lot of self guilt as well that you need to let go of. So I, I think, although you're, you're well on the way of, uh, dealing with that trauma, um, or do you still have a relationship with your father? Until she answers, I'm gonna I'm gonna say as well, Felicia. Thank you for sharing this. This is really incredible, and the fact that you're sharing it is is huge. And um, we cannot fathom the, the the pain and the and the and the struggle that you had to go through throughout your life. Most.
probably you have buried it for a long time until you had the uh, until it was time to sift to face it and let it go. And it is, as Craig mentioned, and prior, prior it's an onion, peeling off the, the onions. Okay, so here she answers uh, to your questions. He recently asked to be friends on Facebook. So that's your, a no, that's a no. I'm your like, you know, you just, you opened up here on our show and that's standing and shining. Don't put bring anyone into your life that's gonna dull that shine. Um, I was I would assume you have children as well, and obviously you're not gonna put your family at risk. She um, says I spoke to him last summer and told him I forgive him. Yep. And gave him gave him a closure. She says thank you. And you know that's my 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 abuse wasn't from a parent, um, and I was never able to talk to said person. But I did, in a way, have to forgive uh, because he was renting space in my head and in my life, where I'm sure I was in a second thought in his. So I really had to forgive a whole bunch of people. I had to forgive my parent for not helping. Um, and feeling abandonment and feeling, well, not knowing what I feel, I guess it was more it, right? Um, but forgiving, but forgiving myself that I had the guilt, right? What I could have done, what I, you know, I could have screamed, I could have did this, I could have did that. Um, what I can do is help others talk about it. What I can do is help others heal with it. And I think that might be that little piece you're missing, is turning that trauma into a teaching tool for other people, for other children, for other families uh, in that kind of situation. It uh, kickstarts that healing process like a hundredfold. But when you get that one person that comes to talk to you and, and says, you see such an impact you've made in their life and their healing, it just changes your life, right? Like you just made that impact in someone else's life through a trauma of huge proportions. So that's how, that's how I healed. That definitely helped me through my years while talking about those issues with others. Um, she answers, I have one daughter and I'm healing this from my lineage. It took me 20 years to forgive. It was long, it was a long road that I uh, know I had to no, it had to, ap to happen so I could, hold on, so I could stop the cycle of dysfunction. And then you are right. Thank you for your insights. If I can help someone else when it wasn't in vain. Totally. Yeah, helping others with your, with what you've learned yourself. You've gone through the shadow. You've gone through the process of relieving yourself from this, from the past. That's your uh, daughter know. Pardon me? That's your daughter know. What is that? Does her daughter know about the, the, her upbringing? Does, does your daughter know? Yeah. I mean, she can hear you too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, Hi, Isabella. I, welcome, dear sister. Good to see you. I think talking to the daughter. Yeah, the daughter knows. Okay, so. The daughter knows. That healing, that's a really close bond that you would have. And you're, you, you're right here. You're, you're stopping the cycle of abuse and of self-hatred. Um, and you're teaching your daughter how to live and how to be free. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge perspective for the child as well. That's a lot of respect for the parent. It's huge. And that's, 
you know that our children are great great healers and it they prove this all the time they know so much i in in fact i asked them business questions but that's not not to take away your subject to, from this but what i'm referring to is your bond with your child and the fact that you shared it with her and she was willing to accept and receive it and think about this you two chose yourselves to be you know she you chose to be her parent she chose to be your daughter for what reason for this specific reason and, and so many more but this is this is big and we honor you felicia and both of us are men and we send our love to you and healing hugs to know that uh, your father did this because it was the only thing he knew and that's from his shadow and that was part of the agreement between you and him and the agreement was so that you are able to transmute this energy now and when you transmute this energy you assist everybody on the planet you transferring this energy into the ground into the planet and it in, in energy to return this increases the 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 awareness of the planet in every every person you're freeing us because of the work that you're doing and thank you and i think yeah, you you mentioned that uh, he'd been trying to get a hold of you on facebook um he's already taken uh, everything from your childhood he doesn't need to take any other time i i myself would not give that an opportunity i think um if a parent does that uh, they don't deserve any chance of reconciliation face to face or brought back into my family um i would not bring my abuser around my children right like we just wouldn't do that and i know for me i wouldn't matter if it was a brother sister father or a mother right we just wouldn't put our children in, in that situation so you can recognize the fact that he has reached out and you know you can show him the person you are by putting your boundary down and going no this is where this stops uh you you know bulldozed my boundaries when I was a child you will not do it as an adult she says uh I will not see him ever I have done my part in his life and it's done love you lots of hugs for sure hugs with you and uh she said another thing here hang on a second I'm fully honest and open with my walk through this life I think she's an older soul than I she's referring to her daughter I don't think so. I think you're about the same because um remember she was born a little bit after you and her what she's wired differently. And you came here to plow the road for her to make space for your child. And you're both old souls. Big time. Big time. So stick around. We're going to do some healing uh, meditation very soon. It will be very rewarding. Cool. Beautiful. That is awesome, Felicia. Totally. Awesome. What else? Did we miss any subject? Anything? We covered a lot of stuff. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. We love you too. She says, uh, thank you. Love you guys. You too. Love you too, Felicia. Thank you for coming thank on board. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for... Uh, Watching this in the future, it doesn't matter. The content and the information is still valid anytime you watch this. So, um, Craig, anything else or should we dive in? Let's, uh, let's do some healing. Awesome. All right. I'm going to give us a very nice. Uh, so get into a comfortable position, please. And start taking in deep breaths. And... Are we? What is that? Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so this meditation is with Gaia. We are going to go on a little journey together. <clears throat> so.
this journey is is for you to to feel, to sense, to smell, to touch. It is for you to realize what it is that you wish to accomplish and to facilitate through these words and through this energy. Your intent is important. Your intent is to assist yourself in the progression and the process of healing. Bring yourself to a comfortable position, please. Take a deep breath bringing the oxygen into your lungs. Your lungs, your body is a little uh, atomic infusion facility where your lungs break the molecules of the air into oxygen and carbon, hydrogen, and breaks it away, takes what it needs and what it longer needs, it removes. Think about the energy that you take, that you create with every, every breath, with the energy that you produce into your body. <clears throat> We're gonna go on a walk to the beach, this beach right in front of you. We're gonna sit on the edge of the water and the earth. Sit comfortably, take another deep breath, smell the ocean breeze, smell the soil the sand, you can hear the birds flying, you can hear the waves. This is a sacred space for you and Gaia. Gaia is preparing to relieve you from any stress, any thoughts, any feelings, any emotions, any relationship to past events which no longer serve you. I ask you to Place all those thoughts right in front of you. I'm laying a beautiful silver platter where you can dump everything on the silver platter. Your thoughts, your feelings, your childhood traumas, your fears, your anguish, your sadness, your negative thoughts, those patterns that you no longer wish to hold in your brain, in your intellectual process on a daily basis. Words that you have said and you regret that you've said. Feelings that you've felt and the uh, actions that you've done, you've taken and you feel regret or shame or anger towards them. People who you feel anger towards, take that anger and put it on the platter. If you have pain anywhere in your body, take that pain and place it on the platter. Take a deep breath. I'll give you a few seconds to take everything that is that you desire to let go. Even if it doesn't have a name, even if you don't know what it is, choose. Simply choose to let go of what no longer serves you. Place it on the tray, the silver tray from Gaia. And take another deep breath. Now sit in stillness as Gaia prepares to take away the tray with everything that's on it to relinquish you from these things, from these energies, thoughts, feelings, all those that you've placed on the tray. And in an instant, it vanishes. Now Gaia works through you, through each of your chakras, one by one, balances the energies, balances the emotional body, the energetical body, balances the synchronization of your Merkaba connects you to the soul's mental grid so you are able to see and identify and be present in that huge, beautiful field. Take another breath, please.
take another breath again. And as you do take the second breath, take in a golden, beautiful light that brings in a, a feeling of serenity, feeling of calm. The healing molecules that Gaia is providing you with to intake, to digest, to every cell of your body, to facilitate healing in your immune system, in your liver, in your heart, in your lungs, in your brain, in your eyes, in your throat, in your spine, in your bones, in your muscles, in your lymphatic system, sexual system, Take another deep breath with another golden light intake. As it fuses into your body again, you feel yourself generated with an incredible amount of energy, with calmness, with peace, with love. Exhale. And simply relax. Remain in this state for as long as you like. This is the space for you. We will end this transmission. And with this thought, with this prayer, to connect to the future, connect to the future where you see yourself in a peaceful place, in a joy and satisfaction. You see love all around you. The planet is in peace. Peace between all cultures, all humans. We work together to grow to heal one another, to heal the planet, to love one another, and most of all, love ourselves. A love that God loves the child. The same love, not a love of ego, a love of compassion, a love of a parent. One that knows who you are. One that knows your profound and powerful presence. You are a creator, a creator of your reality. And together we are creating a beautiful planet. This is a beautiful day to have this affirmation because your moon is in a beautiful alignment to create a beautiful possibility for everybody. We love you dearly. And we thank you for taking the time in healing yourself and the planet. With love, Gaia and the entourage.